Welcome back. Um, here we have a question from P2, Pure Mathematics 2 International A Level. This is from the January 2020 paper. And this is a question, um, part A is about the trapezium rule. And part B is uh, something which is um, the type of new style of question which occurs in, in the new P, P, P2 papers. Um, which is normally part B of the trapezium rule type question. So let's start with part A. It says the table shows corresponding values of x and y for y equals log to the base 2 of 2x. The values of y are given to two decimal places as appropriate. Uh, so you've got x equals 2, y equals 2, and so on. x equals 5, y equals 3.32, and, and so on. So we've got to use the trapezium rule with all the values of y in the given table uh, to obtain an estimate for this the integral, an estimate of the integral between the limits of 14 and 2 of log to the base 2 of 2x. Okay, with respect to x. So we can see that the table goes for x values from 2 to 14, so that's fine. And um, when you want to find um, an estimate using the trapezium rule, of course you don't integrate this. In fact, in P2 we did not learn how to integrate something like that anyway. So we're going to use the trapezium rule. Now, to, to use the trapezium rule, we're going to get an estimate. So it's not going to be equal to, so I'll just put a little squiggly equal sign. It's approximately equal to. Now, the trapezium rule, um, just for a little background, supposing you have your graph like this, and we're going from x equals 2 to x equals 14. Okay, say the curve looks something like this. Okay, we, we don't actually know... Just say it looks like that, okay, something like this. We don't, we don't know what it looks like. Let me make that neater. Okay, it starts, the y values start from 2, then they go up. Uh, yeah, they're going up the whole time. So it's like something like this. Okay, we need to find, um, basically, when you integrate between two limits, what you're doing is you're finding the area between that curve and the x-axis. So that's what we're actually finding here. Okay, finding that area. So in order to find that area, what we, what we actually do using the trapezium rule is we split up that area into separate trapeziums. Whoops, separate trapeziums. Okay, so you can see that the first x value they gave us 2, then we got 5, and then we got 8, and then we got 11, and then we got 14. So you've got these trapeziums here that you split this up into. And you kind of, uh, although this is a curve here, you approximate it into, into trapezium. So like you've got a trapezium like this and then one next to it and so on. So we can see that the, the gaps between the x values are the distance between the parallel sides of the trapezium. And we know the area of a trapezium, one way of thinking about it is h over 2 times a plus b. h is the distance between the parallel sides, which in this case is this value 3. Okay, three. And A and B are the lengths of the parallel sides. So you're going to have basically three times this length plus three over two times this length plus that length. Now this length is represented by the Y value when X equals two and this length is represented by the Y value when X equals five. So when X equals two, Y is equal to two and X equals five, Y is equal to 3.32 and so on. So if you imagine you're taking the area of all of these there's four trapeziums here. What you're going to do is you're going to have the same thing for each of them in terms of the length divided by 2 uh, or the distance between the parallel sides divided by 2, which is 3 divided by 2. And then you're going to have this, these lengths added together. For, for the first trapezium, you're going to have this plus this. For the second trapezium, you're going to have this plus that. For the third trapezium, you're going to have this plus that. And for the last trapezium, you're going to have this line plus that line. Okay, so basically, if you notice, this line and this line are just used in the first and the last trapeziums, but these lines are used in the first trapezium and the second trapezium, this line in the second and the third, and this line in the third and the fourth. So the outer ones are used just once. So the two here and the 4.81 are used just once. So you're going to have 2 plus 4.81. And then the rest of them, which is the 3.32, the 4, and the 4.46, they are used twice. So I'm going to put 2 times 3.32 plus 4 plus 4.46. And that 
should give us an approximate value of um, the area under that curve between 2 and 14, which is an approximation for the integral of log to the base 2, 2x with respect to x between 2 and 14. So we get our calculator and we stick these numbers in our calculator and we see what happens. So you have 3 over 2 and times you got 2 plus 4.81 plus 2 times you're going to have 3.32 just make sure we don't make a mistake with typing anything in plus 4 and plus 4.46 so I'm going to close the bracket for the inner bracket and then for the outer bracket which I should have put there whoops which I should have put there and that will give us um, our answer, which is 9111 9, over 200. So let me just write that, 9111 over 200, which we got to round to one decimal place. So we just press this SD button, which gives us 45.6. So 45.6 to one decimal place. Okay, so that gives us 45.555 which is 45.6 according to how we should write our answer and there we have the answer to part A okay that's 1A so we get 45.6 is the answer to the question now let's go to part B now part B uh, this was 9111 over 200 which we rounded to 45.6 okay now it says using your answer to part A that's why I wrote this down here and making your method clear estimates this value. So you can't just write down an answer because some calculators you might be able to type this in and you know get an, uh, the exact answer actually. So that's why they say making your method clear because I know there are calculators that can uh, do these operations. So therefore you have to show your, your, your steps clearly. Now in, this is the new style of questioning that um, I've noticed in at Excel. Um, in the new uh, P1, P2 papers, okay, where you have a trapezium rule question and the second part of the question is um, you know, something which you have to modify from what you found in the first part of the question. So basically what I need to do is focus on getting this log to the base 2 of 2x out of here. All right, now, so there's a few things that you could do. The first thing I would do is I would say, all right, let's just take out this one-fifth outside integral sign just to get it out of the way. So you've got one-fifth times the integral of log to the base 2, and you've got 4x squared dx. Okay, now we need to end up with log to the base 2, 2x. Now, one of the things that somebody might instinctively do is say, okay, let's split this up into I'm going to write it down here uh, and then I'll cross it out because it's, it's actually going to be wrong but I just want to just see some of the mistakes that people might do so log to the base 2 of 4x squared they might say okay this is like log to the base 2 of 2 times 2x squared okay and then they'll get to here basically um, that's 2 times 2x squared and remember we want to get this so then they'll say okay this is log to the base 2 of 2 plus, using the addition formula, um, log to the base 2 of 2x squared. Now, one of the mistakes that somebody might make here is they might say, ah, oh, this is the same as 2 times log to the base 2 of 2x. But that's not correct. That does not become this. Okay, this, for you to, to use a power law, you have to split this up further into log to the base 2, 2, plus log to the base 2 of x squared and then this will give you this part will become 2 log to the base 2x and it doesn't look the same as what we have to use okay so therefore that method doesn't doesn't work to split this up in that way okay so we've got to think of something else okay so a lot of people would try to at this stage they will make this mistake here they will think that they're on the right tracks and then they will say, okay, this is, you know, uh, this is one plus two times the answer to part A. And, but that's not the correct answer because that, that does not become this. Okay, the power law can only be used 
once you split these two products up. It's not 2x. If this was 2x all to the power of 2, then this would work. But it's not, that's not the, the, the right way to go about it. So I'm sure a lot of people would have made that mistake. That's why I went through it, um, to make sure that you understand that that's not an, a, a proper way of, of dealing with it. So let me go through the proper way of dealing with it. And now what we can notice is 2x, 4x squared is the same as 2x all squared, which I just showed you now. That's actually the same as that. So if we then continue to say 1 fifth times the integral between 14 and 2 of log to the base 2, and this is 2x all squared. This is the same as that. 4x squared is 2x times 2x, which is 2x all squared with respect to x, of course. So now I can use the power law here, you see, now because this whole thing is the power of 2. So I can say this is the same as 1 fifth times the integral between 2 and 14 of 2 times log to the base 2 of 2x. Now I have this, this part is exactly the same as that. Okay, and I know the value of this by esti what, we, what esti we estimated earlier. So then we're going to have, you can take out the 2 if you want, so you have 2 fifths times the integral between 2 and 14 of log to the base 2, 2x with respect to x, and that is exactly what we have in part A. So our answer to part A, which was 45.6, and it says using your answer to part A and method, making your method clear. So they don't want you to use a trapezium rule again, um, you know, sticking values of x between whatever. No, they want you to use the answer you already got for part A, and this is how we did it. So this is 2 fifths multiplied by our answer to part A, which will, I'll, I'll write it as our final answer that we wrote. So 2 fifths times 45.6. So you take this answer, multiply by 2 fifths, and you get 18.2. Um, I'll write 18.2. I'll put it again to one decimal place. 18.2, and that's the answer to B part one. Okay, I hope that was clear there. And B part two is actually quite similar in the sense of you have to remember um, get back to this same. Oops, I'll just bring this down here so we can see it here. We have to break it down so it becomes it looks like this log to the base two of two x. So let's see how we can do that here. Now, if I went ahead and just tried to split this up using the uh, subtraction law, I would get log to the base 2, 2 minus log to the base 2x. And there's a problem here because I need log to the base 2, 2x. So how can I end up with this becoming a 2x? Now, what I'm, what I, I, you can see that what you could do is you can modify this division here to make it an equivalent fraction which will end up with 2x underneath. So we know that 2 over x would be the same as, if you make this 2x, this would be 4 over 2x. That gives you exactly the same thing. So if I just rewrite this as log to the base 2 of 4 over 2x, it actually has exactly the same value as what's above here. And I can then split it up and get what I, I need. I'll have log to the base 2 of 4 minus log to the base 2 of 2x. And that's exactly what we're looking for, log to the base 2 of 2x. Okay, with respect to x, so let me get rid of that, put this in a bracket. Okay, so now log to the base 2 of 4 we know, so you have the integral between 2 and 14 of log to the base 2 of 4 now. We know that 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. The value of log to the base 2, 4 is 2. Uh, minus log to the base 2 of 2x uh, with respect to x. Now what I can do is I can actually integrate this part because I know what the integral of 2 is. So I can write this as the integral be between 14 and 2 of 2 with respect to x minus the integral between 14 and 2 of log to the base 2 of 2x with respect to x. So I separated them out. Now I know the value of this from part A. This was equal to 45.6. Okay, and this I can work out. That's going to give me 2x, okay, 2x between 14 and 2 minus 
Now I know that this is 45.6. Okay, so I'm going to have, that's 2 times 14, which is 28 minus 4. Uh, 2 times 14, 28 minus 2 times 2, 4. That's 24 minus uh, 45.6. Uh, 6. Hold on. Yep. 2x. Yep, so that's going to give me uh, 24. 14 times 2, 28 minus 4. Yeah, 24 minus 45.6. One second, let me just check something. This is 2 squared, yeah, 2. So 24 minus 45.6, which is going to give you minus 21.6. And there we have the answer to part B.